last time I basically showed you some dead bodies, and I'm not going to do that today, so just rest assured you'll be fine. Um, but I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something similar. Um, I'm pretty sure most of you go out and watch movies. Well, I'm a huge horror fanatic, so I'm going to talk to you today, or reveal to you today, some history behind the horror movies and why I feel I was born to watch them. Horror films are made to basically scare the living daylights out of you. <laughs> And um, while researching the history behind horror films, I found out some really interesting facts. Um, I got this info from a website called um, Answers.com. Now, there's a slight conflict between when the first horror film was made and when it wasn't. Okay, so what I found out was the first horror film ever made was The Execution of Emily Stewart. And believe it or not, it was uh, made by Thomas Edison. Now, never in a million years would I thought that Thomas Edison would have made the first horror film. Never in a million years. So it was about 18 seconds long, and it basically is a 18-second uh, yeah, film about a woman being beheaded. Oh. Oh. <laughs> 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 Okay, so that was a short film, obviously, and the longer films were made in the 1900s. Now, um, in 1910 was the remake of Frankenstein. Now, I know all of you haven't seen the original Frankenstein. You're more familiar with The Bride of Frankenstein. Now, The Bride of Frankenstein just had a birthday a couple of days ago. It was April 22nd, and it was uh, filmed in eight, oh, I'm sorry, 1935. So when I think of horror films, I don't think about that. I think of basically Nightmare on Elm Street. That was the very first horror film I've ever seen, and I love that film. Okay, I got this information from Wikipedia. Nightmare on Elm Street is a 1984 American slasher film that was directed by Wes Craven. Now, this was when I first saw my very first movie. I have older brothers, so they always introduced me to horror films, and that's where basically I got my love for horror films, and I will always watch them. Okay, I've also seen classics like Friday the 13th and Nightmare, or I'm sorry, Friday the 13th, and, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Night of the Living Dead. Did you guys, have you guys ever seen those movies, Night of the Living Dead? Okay, well, that's where I first laid my eyes upon zombies, and that's where I fell in love with zombies. <laughs> Okay, this movie is about a man named Freddy Krueger. And what happened was, years ago, he basically killed 20 children. And um, due to the technicality of his arrest, he got released. And uh, the parents of the 20 children basically sought revenge on him. And they burned him alive in a boiler room. So then he decided to take revenge upon the parents and decided that he was going to um, extract his revenge against uh, the, sh the parents by killing the children in their sleep. Now when I saw this movie, I couldn't sleep for about a month. <laughs> and I didn't want to dream, I didn't want to go to bed, I didn't want to do anything, but lo and behold, I had to. The reason why I love this movie is because they make remakes all the time of it. Like, you see it all the time. And some people say that remakes kind of suck because it's not like the original, but I beg to differ on that one. <laughs> there is a movie called The Evil Dead. <laughs> It just came out in 2013. <laughs> I'm sorry. There we go. Evil Dead. Now, this one came out in 2013. God, that light. I'm sorry. It was directed by Fede Alvarez, and it's the fourth installment of The Evil Dead. The really interesting thing about the remake of this film is that the original director, Sammy Rami, Sam Ramey personally selected Alvarez to remake this movie. Uh, the, the original movie, Evil Dead, is a 1981 American horror film written and directed by Sam Ramey. This movie, in a nutshell, is about five Michigan um, kids who basically go out to a cabin to celebrate spring break. Well, during that time, they found this video recording, and on the video recording, it had some um, incantations from the Book of the Dead. They played the video and it basically wrote, uh, woke up an evil spirit and a girl went out into the woods and basically got raped <laughs> by a tree that was 
uh, possessed by the devil or possessed by a demon or whatever. And she brought it back to the cabin, and then it basically uh, uh, possessed every single person in there, and they have to kill each other. Yeah, all that fun stuff. <laughs> now, I'm probably older than most of you, and this movie came out in 1981. So I was born in 1981. <laughs> So I kind of have a connection with this movie a little bit, and that is why I feel I was born to watch our movies. Okay, Star, uh, let me... Tear me apart. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to tear you apart. I, I, there are some things that you need to work on, okay. uh, but there are some things that you did nicely, too. I, I like the reference to the earlier speech in your introduction. I thought that that was fun. It, it makes a connection to what we're talking about and reminds us that uh, you know this is kind of a community that we're engaged in here. You do need a preview that's uh, much more distinct than you have. It basically comes down to you're going to be talking about two or three particular films and that becomes the structure of the speech. You've got some historical information too. Um, I'm not exactly sure as I'm looking back that I could pick out an organizational structure. I guess it's topical. There's you know a little bit of history and then we skip 50 years and then we've got uh, you know the contemporary films that you want to talk about and and I'm glad that you pick films that you enjoy because that keeps your enthusiasm level up but it does need to have I think a little more coherence to it uh, there are probably better places to, like I said there's probably not a thing wrong with uh, what's in the Wikipedia I would just prefer mm -hmm. that people not quote Wikipedia there's there you know, they, they've got original sources that they're consulting uh, that people are using to get the information and you could have easily done that. It will sound a lot more professional too. All right. Uh, on, on the delivery issues, you've got a couple of things that you need to watch out for, especially in the beginning of the speech. You do the uh, kind of a hip pointing thing. This is where your nervousness is coming out. You're shifting your weight on your hips and it's... It, it, you know, not quite a hula, but it does look a little bit awkward, and it does. That's what makes you look nervous. So, so you want to be careful about that. The gestures, for the most part, are indicators. They're contained. Your facial expressions. Look, you look like you're having a good time while you're talking to us. Once in a while, you're laughing and smiling in a in a situation that seems incongruent with, you know, the gruesome. Uh, or yeah, the somber, so or the scary stuff. You're talking about how scary something is, and so, I, like I said, it is. There's some of it that works. It, it wasn't, okay. it, but it did seem like you're a little bit out of control, and you weren't really conveying the mood that you wanted to. That you sounded like you wanted. It sounded like nervous, smiling, and laughing, as opposed to, you know. You know, I saw that movie when I was a kid. It was so scary. I was afraid of having nightmares, and of course I did. You know, something like that. And then, 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 then it makes sense that you're smiling, and laughing at the second part. But you're, <laughs> and I saw it when I was a kid. And I said, ah. you know, and it, 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 it's just like the constant smiling, and laughing takes away from the the impact that you're trying to get there. So you just need. I'll tell you the thing that I think you need the most work on. You need to practice it because it's just not very smooth coming through, both the delivery and the, and the content issues. Um, I'm not going to yell at you too much because it's a name and let's face it, names always get wrong. You know, people make mistakes on those things. But you're supposed to be a uh, aficionado of these films, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody calls him Sam Raimi. It's Raimi. Raimi, you know, Sam Raimi. 
who also made the Spider-Man movies and that kind of stuff. So you know, it's and just did uh, Oz, the Great and Powerful. You know, so so it's not like his name is unknown. Uh, it's just one of those little things that you need to be careful about. Like I said, when you watch it back, you'll see there are a lot of things that you that would have just gone better if maybe you'd run through it a couple more times. You'd feel more confident and a little bit less awkward here. And it's whenever you get to an awkward point that you lose your composure. And that's what you want to keep. All right. Thank you.